What is good? We're back. We got Big Co back on the ones and twos. What's up? Oh, man, not much. Happy to be here. Talk about some fantasy footballs. Um, hadn't been here in a while. Always good to be here and chat with you about the, the game that we love to play. It's interesting. This podcast started 15 years ago, 18 years ago on the phone, yeah. on the couch, whether we're watching football before the game, during the game, after the game, the next day, lots of Tuesdays and Mondays on the phone talking about football. Yeah. And then here before, we are. Before we even got up on the mics but here we are on the mics about to hit some roster reviews some moves to make right now to win dynasty championships of course because why else would we be doing this obviously uh we got a couple of patrons that are uh gonna need a little assistance and a little bit more towards the kind of ready to win or might need a little bit more depth so we're gonna go through those i think we're gonna try to hammer through two out on this show um we haven't been Big Co hadn't been able to make it, so we hadn't been doing these, but I, we have been hammering them out on the Patreon side of things. Every time we do one, we'll do uh, one or two of those. So uh, be sure to go over there, check that out. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, so right off the rip, we got a guy who is in Season 4 of a 12-team Dynasty League. One quarterback, full PPR, start 10, bench 10, IR 2, taxi 3. Just missed the playoffs due to a points 4 tiebreaker. I'm assuming that's what that stands for mm -hmm. last yeah. year uh would love to hear from y'all what direction i should go from here so he has a really pretty solid starting lineup one quarterback uh, you know everything's pretty standard here he has his starting lineup is joe burrow gibbs eckler and then he's got jefferson and aj brown so two of the top five wide receivers right sure sure and, and one of the top three running backs so yeah it's always a good start eckler doesn't make him feel good anymore but those the gibbs and the two wide receivers are nice but Eckler's probably going to come out here and be just fine this year. I would know? love it. I need um, him on one of my teams for sure. Then he's going with Trey McBride, so another top five at a position. Mm -hmm. You might have him one. You might have him three, four. Who knows? But, okay. you know, good good player there. T. Higgins, a little bit of a disappointment, but a good player. Godwin, you know, maybe you were hoping Godwin would be a little bit more like Evans was this past year. But, you know, still some decent games from Godwin and still a good player there. And I still I love Chris Godwin. I th I mean a little bit down the stretch it looked like uh him and Baker got on the same page. Mm -hmm. If without without a huge like quarterback upgrade from Baker for Chris Godwin, obviously for Mike Evans as well cuz they were just cooking together, but like the, I think it's huge for Godwin that he didn't have to go through another quarterback change. Right. Um he, 2 years ago he called 100 balls or something like that from Tommy. It wasn't a lot off an injury. Chris Godwin is a really really good player. Definitely started really slow with Baker and had some ups and downs, but got a little better towards the end of the year. And sticking with Baker for the next year, I think, is huge for Godwin. And hopefully he can pick up and be, you know, get back. And if we can just average 13 to 15 points with this guy, he's more than yeah. capable. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, then we got Daniel Jones on the bench, Kareem Hunt on the bench. We got Aaron Jones on the bench. So between Eckler and Jones, I think you, you got something in your RB2 spot there. A.J. Dillon. Michael Carter, Ty Chandler. So a bunch of shots here yeah. at some second running back production. Chase Brown, probably your most valuable second running back asset, maybe. And and an escalator, as I like mm -hmm. to call it. Mm -hmm. A guy who can, can kind of go up in value, but you like where he's at. And then he's got A.J. Brown on the bench, but uh, he's got his wide receiver spot empty for some reason. So A.J. Brown's up there. Demario Douglas and Isaiah likely uh, bringing up the rear there. Charlie Jones, Bobo, and Sean Tucker on the IR. Or Jake on the taxi Bobo. squad. Um, and then nobody on IR. So, yeah. you know, so not a whole lot of depth. If you're scoring at home, we got one wide receiver on the bench. You you, you know, he's right. got A.J. Brown and Justin Jefferson, which are, you know, fantastic to have as a combo. And then Demario Douglas, the, you know, youngster startup you know, hoping that he can catch fire and do something. But that's, you know, there is zero wide receiver depth on this team. Right. And, you know, I like likely, you like likely. This is a very, very pro likely since he came out of Coastal Carolina podcast. But your second, your, your backup tight end is kind of a backup tight end. We don't know how, like, he was great last year when Andrews was hurt. It'd be, it's crazy that, you know, you we don't really know what what's going to happen with, with likely. So you don't really even have a, uh, another tight end you feel great about starting right off the rip now 
week three, it could be like, oh my God, they're using Andrews and likely, and they got this whole scheme. I, I feel like you should, at least should be cooking up something with those two guys on the field at the same time, but that's not likely. Um, so, you know, we don't really have a second tight end per se either, but your starting lineup is awesome. Um, sure. I, you, you are ready to roll and, and, and smoke people. Um, uh, most weeks until you catch a little bit of an injury bug and then you might have to stumble through some weeks. Right. Well, and that's, I mean, that's why he sent it in. He, right. he basically, his question was, I need depth. What I do. And I think, you know, he's got the one, six and one, seven right. draft picks and you know, one quarterback league. So one, six and one, seven, um, different than what way, the way we normally talk about them is being in super flex. So it's one quarterback. Um, but just before I get, before I get too far away from, I love seeing Isaiah likely on my teams. Mm, sure. Like you said, if you if week week one McBride got hurt and you needed to plug in your tight end backup week two, like you said, when Andrews is healthy, we don't know what you're going to get out of likely. Uh, hopefully, the Ravens saw enough and it's like, dude, we got to be able to use both of these guys at the same time. Uh, they don't exactly have studs at the wide receiver position all over the place anyway, so why not incorporate likely more you know more often when Andrews comes back, but. I'm surprised that that likely and in super flex leagues we could look at his ADP. I'm surprised he still goes as late as he does. Oh, real late. He's so far down the list. He's one of those guys that'll be on my must draft dynasty startup teams because he's so far down the list and you saw what he could do. Um and yeah, he may be a, you know, roster clogger for a while, but he's a lineup beast when 14 one when it gets there. Yeah, I thought he was in the 14th round. So anyway, love seeing likely on my team, but yeah, I mean you you'd be better off with a um, uh, the guy from the Patriots, Hunter Henry. Hunter, you'd be you'd be better off with Hunter Henry if you needed to start a, start somebody next week, right? You know, if week week two, if you need to start somebody, you'd be better off with Hunter Henry. But Isaiah Likely is the guy that you want on your team mm, for sure. Um, all right, so so you got six and seven. You got one six one seven. You don't so. have a whole lot of assets on your bench to really make any powerful, meaningful moves, right? So True. You're, you're banking on those two things. What do you do there? Do you do you stick and pick because you know it's not like superflex like we're talking we're not there isn't the big six anymore and it's not tight end premium so bowers is you know kind of take it for what it is depending on how you feel and how your league feels about tight ends um depending on which big affiliate they listen to they sure. may either be in or out well this is a what this is it's an interesting um you know setup here because he does have, you know, the Jefferson and A.J. Brown, T. Higgins, Chris Godwin. So that's a, that's, a, that's a very solid four. Super first two, solid flexes, and then there's nothing behind them. So, mm-hmm. obviously, you're going into the rookie draft looking for wide receivers. He's, I got, he's got the one six one seven and no other picks this year. And like you said, not a whole lot on the bench to work with. Um, maybe there's a Ty Chandler guy in your league just to get a little something started. Uh, maybe well, you at least have Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler now, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's not the worst. No, and I mean Aaron Jones for I don't see why he isn't going to go to Minnesota and just do work. Right. Um. So that's you know, AJ Dillon, man, what a drop off. He goes ends up going back to the Packers and now he's sitting behind Josh. Mm. So that's not the best. Um, and then Kareem Hunt to be determined if he's gonna play again <laughs> right um so you know i, I guess in, so like you said it's not super flex so you got you don't have the big seven but i i mean i'm not p- premium or not obviously i mean i'm i'm huge on uh the tight end um i'm, I'm all about it so i'm all about brock bowers i think obviously everybody talks about brock bowers and like scheme fit and stuff like who uh, this is very fresh. So like it, 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 the Falcons came in hard, hot and heavy with Kyle Pitts, used him like they should have as a rookie, changed the coach, brought in an offensive coordinator, made him a head coach. It didn't work out like we see often with coordinators. And then so for spent two years not getting the didn't best. Didn't have a quarterback. Did with that too. But, and you know, inj- so, and then injured. But so like, you know, it's, reasonably speaking like who's who's taken brock bowers that high in the draft to not really try to use them mm-hmm. we've seen it before but most likely cooler heads are going to prevail and whoever quote unquote you think who's drafting drafting him who has the plan right? right why would you draft that draft that weapon of a guy and not have a plan in the last couple of years the 
rational coaching narrative goes around and for fantasy. And sometimes we think we're smarter than the coaches and sometimes we seem like it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, so I'm, I'm still premium or no premium. Bowers is way up my rookie board. Um, just a stud, um, it, you know, and you flex them where you want to flex them. If you, if you got McBride and you got Bowers, good. If one of them gets hurt, you got a stud tight end. If both of them are rolling then you can put them in your flex. Um, so I'm not letting Bowers slip down too far, but anyway, so you got, He's got six, so let's just go Harrison and Neighbors and Rome. Let's just uh, those guys are nowhere to be seen. If you got six, those are the first three picks, most likely in a one quarterback league, right? Mm-hmm. So let's just say that it's probably Brian Thomas and Xavier Worthy, and or Bowers, and or Bowers. So you know, I'm just let, for sake of if I'm in the league and I'm at four and Bowers is there, I don't even with no premium. I probably, I mean, yeah, I can. I might be looking at Brian Thomas, but if Bowers is over here with top fifteen in a decent position. I'm I'm pro- I'm not passing on Bowers, but I'm I don't want to pass on Brian Thomas either. So, but that's four and five. So he's got six and seven. So let's just say Brian Thomas is gone, Bowers is gone. So he's looking at Worthy, Franklin, Lad McConkey, and Mitchell, AD, and, and AD Mitchell, Brooks, Benson, most likely. Um, you know, in 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 this case, you know, you got players like that is higher as as highly thought of as Worthy. And especially like Lad McConkey and A.D. Mitchell and Troy Franklin's not quite as poppy as he was two months ago. There's probably plenty of people that are still going to love him. And, of course, everything after the NFL draft will be kind of sure. reordered a little bit. Um, in my mind, I'm not really looking at what running backs here. I think a lot of people feel that way. And, and for this team, he's got some stabs on the bench. And he's got a couple of good starters. And he's got that such with that with that starting lineup – Maybe if you get lucky at six and, you know, for some reason Brian Thomas is sit, slips to you or something and there's a worthy guy, hey, this I'm a 4-2 guy, I'm going to grab worthy, and you got a chance to get him. Yeah, I think the I think the point would be do you trade back with one of those picks? Right. I think that's where we're going to end up, right? Um, or if you just say, hey, man, I got one of the, there's no way I don't have one of the top three-ish starting lineups if my guys can stay healthy. Where's my depth coming from? Maybe, you know, maybe you're just like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit Worthy and McConkey here or Mitchell. I mean, if it, again, without the draft happening, whoever goes to the Bills, if one of these guys goes to the Bills, he's going to fire off. If one of these guys go to the Chiefs, they're going to fire off. And then one of these guys is might probably not going to go right where we want them to, but they might get picked at the 15th, at 115 in the NFL draft. And all of a sudden now they got ridiculous draft capital, capital you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so – that being said, I think at six and seven, I think you either get a. I think you. I think you have to take a wide receiver for sure. You don't have. You got. You got four. You could potentially, if um, T. Higgins got the tag, and there's a lot being made about the uh, the Bengals are really not taking phone calls to trade him because they want to try to win the Super Bowl. Then it, it gives them the best chance to do it. Yeah. So you could potentially. If when Burrow comes back healthy, maybe you could, and if they're firing off, maybe you could trade Higgins and tra- and tear down from Higgins and get some depth there. Higgins down to this player and get plus, but you're not probably, you're not going to get the, you're not going to get really good value on Higgins because for some reason Higgins value is down and his quarterback was hurt. So you got the double negative there. So you, you just, one of those things like off season trading T Higgins right now is very tough. You got to get, you know, you got to get Joe Burrow coming Bounce back. back. And Joe Burrow is this dude's quarterback, so he's getting that you know mm-hmm. that double up. When if Higgins is doing well and and Joe Burrow's one throwing him the ball, then that's super you know solid for his team. Um, so this is one of those things where in the in the draft, it without knowing without seeing in the draft room and saying, all right, well this guy right here, he's sitting here at one ten, but he also has you know two two. It's like, well, th- maybe this guy's like, all right, well, I'll give you 110 and 22 two to come up here to 17. That sounds aggressive, but maybe this guy's like, I got to have Xavier Worthy on my team. Right. You know, those things t- kind of happen. Um, or maybe it's, you know, you trade back from 17 to 21 or something, and the 21 guy will bring you in like this year's, you know, three or four years ago, I would have been like, hey, let me get a Tyler Boyd type player, somebody who he was getting those targets. Like, so, you know, let me get somebody like that where I can. Get a starter, a, a low. Not you're not getting a high end starter in that type of a trade back. But some people in the rookie draft, there's that rookie fever. Yeah, could I people, get Deontay Johnson? Can I get exactly. Christian Kirk? Can I get perfect uh, Christian Kirk? Deontay, it, 
going into the season, you know, that player for me would be Kirk over Deontay Johnson. Um, but once we're three weeks into the season, if Deontay Johnson has 30 targets in three weeks, then that would be nice to see. But Kirk could have 30 targets in three weeks as well. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if the Jaguars take a receiver early. If the Jaguars don't take a receiver early, Kirk and Evan Ingram are lined up for a lot of targets. Yeah. Um, and they could still take a wide receiver early, and Kirk and Ingram could oh, have a lot sure. of targets early, and it kind of flavored, you know, kind of tear down later as as a big time receiver gets worked into the offense. Um, yeah, no, but, I, I, I think I, I think I probably take a pick and then try to trade one back. Is is I think I'm with you, kind of there, and and that would be w- what you were alluding to is kind of what I was thinking the whole time. Like I would maybe even I might you know try to trade back. A little bit. I, I'd want to try to get Lad McConkey because that's my guy. I like Lad, but that's what I'd be trying to do. I'd be trying to move back a little bit, get Lad, and then, like you said, be able to either add some extra picks or add. You know, I, I want to try to get three or four players out of these two picks that I have, essentially, um, and, and and add some depths and add some shots. And I and I think I want at least one or two of them to not be rookies that I'm unsure of. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, that's yeah. So exactly, if you can, if you trade back in a Christian Kirk, is a if you got if you only trade back, let's say, a woefully disrespected Christian Kirk. Now, not every owner you wouldn't treat him like that, but like say if you not me, but you, right, exactly, a guy but, I know, <laughs> right. So if you trade back from seven to two one two two, how far do you have to trade back to pick up? And obviously, the guy that has Christian Kirk may not have an early second round draft pick, but is that type of player. Um, but I would say this, if you're sitting there at one six and Brian Thomas is gone and Casey's a lab McConkey guy and he's like, I want to trade back and see if I can still get lab McConkey. Yeah. Xavier worthy, Troy Franklin and AD Mitchell might still be on the board, but you better, if you want McConkey, you better not gamble trading back two spots because yeah. he's got the hype train. Sure, and and sure. he was for some people. Yeah, he was going to have a hype train and we'll see where the NFL. And then he went and ran a four, three P- point might be moot because we'll see where the NFL draft puts him. And of then course, where that, where that course. goes. But but I'm saying like even like he was he was the route running technician of the draft and he was this yard per route run against zone is outrageous. And, y'all just, uh, you know, all this good stuff that you would love to see, especially since the NFL plays a ton of zone these days. Freaking then he goes and runs a four, three. And then he throws it now. So the film guys and some analytic guys and then the four, three guys go all, all that's blending together here for a lad. So if you have a, a rogue rookie draft or a rogue startup earlier in the year and you got yourself some cheap lad, good for you. Yeah. Cheap lads going quick, Bo. It's, right. There's ch- lads. Lads' price tag is screaming up. Yeah, I mean, there's still enough people and, who who are who aren't who are out of them and don't have them. Right, like we're usually talking super flex tight and premium and don't have them in the first round still. They're having them on the outside, so there still might be some guys who are more into Troy Franklin or whatever. So, I, but I guess my point is, is I'm okay moving back to from one six or one seven to one ten, and if I get. If I get to Troy Franklin as my consolation prize, that's fine. We talk about but, this every you know, year. If whatever. you're at one six, obviously you got this guy's got one six and one seven. So if he makes a picks at six and he trades seven to ten, there's three spots there and you can see your guy. So it's like, yeah, if you get stuck with A D Mitchell at one ten or you get stuck with Troy Franklin, I mean, you know, you're you're obviously under and I'm sure I'm sure somebody in your league's gonna throw a running back in there. Yeah. And especially you get down that far, somebody's got Caleb Williams could easily go. Mm-hmm. Um Jaden Daniels, the running quarterback. Right, you get back in the back half of that first. Absolutely, yeah. dude. I mean, I, I don't see why Caleb Williams is not going in the back in the you know, one eight, one nine, one ten, or and even Jaden Daniels in a one quarterback league, somebody just absolutely swinging for the fence on the potential Lamar Jackson. Right. You know, right. kind of guy. Yeah. Um, so, so the move back kind of targets as the older receivers. Christian Kirk's always gonna be one for me, and uh Deontay Johnson's gonna be one for me. And then, you know, you go a little further down, Jacoby Myers is always one for me. So he's he's one if you have to even tier further down to, and do something else with. I, I like him to, to score you some points. But this team's also not out of the race of going after some of the even older wide receivers because you have a good team here. So, like, you, you don't need to be scared of grabbing Cooper Cup or Amari Cooper or, or uh, Keenan Allen or... Um, I would want something you know, like just, that after my second... For my second trade back if right, you kept going. Right, if, so... If, yeah, exactly. I would not in the first trade. I I can't. I'm not moving off. Even if you got, you know, if you if you took Ladd or you took Xavier Worthy or Ad Mitchell, if you took any of those guys at one six, 
I don't want to troll because you still, I mean, you could get two of them. But dude, you could get, you could get A.D. Mitchell or Worthy or whoever goes to the Bills or the Chiefs. It's all of a sudden that new flavor. You could trade the guy before you get to week one. Yeah. You don't have to have a Sky Moore situation. Right. Um, you don't have to get yeah, that you know, far. If you, well, uh, good point. Like, if you're if you're struggling to get the, the, the trade back a little out of time and not have to get a monumental trade back all the way to 2-5, then it's okay to just make you two picks that you like the best and then continue to work until, like, that's a good point. You don't, you know, sometimes it's, we're talking about doing these things, but it doesn't work out. It's 100%. okay to just take those picks. Use your whole clock, figure it out, try to make your your uh your moves around and figure out who's who's got looser grips on on certain guys the running back position is the position i'll wait to address until we're in season if things are going well i'll go by i'm not not really you know i'm not ruling out that i wouldn't throw a running back in one of these trade back scenarios if i got a good value on them like a jacobs or something like that but it's mostly going to be receivers i'm eyeing up here (laughs) and trying to add you know i'd love to like you said, throwing a Hunter Henry on some, throwing one of those later round tight ends that nobody likes that still scored okay points. Uh, well, and 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 it's a good point too because if if you're on the clock, at, let's say you made a pick, let's just say you threw Lad McConkey on your team at one six, and then you're on the clock at one seven, and you're looking for that perfect trade back at the two one two three spot or two two or something. You're looking for a really good combination. You can't find it. Clock's dwindling down. Maybe you just trade back to the one to the next spot to one eight. And for a very small amount, a right. third round pick, right? You know, and if you're like, oh, I need more than that. Well, do you? Because if you're, you, you know, like now you get to try to trade back all over again. Yeah. And the guy that was at two one didn't want to trade back because he was like, well, I'm definitely going to be able to get uh, A.D. Mitchell here. But the guy that you traded back one spot with actually came up and took A.D. Mitchell. So now the guy at two one is is you know, yeah, his he thought he could wait. Yeah. That guy's gone. And he gets now he gets antsy and he's like, all right, well, I got to come up and get you know. Um, the guy from Oregon now, because you know that that's that's how it works. If you if you can find the perfect trade, great. It's very difficult. We we get out here and paint a scenario, but it does get very difficult to do. You know to find the the right trade, and then if you can't, um, either a, uh, I like I like a couple options. If you can't find the right one that that you're really digging for, okay, how far do I have to trade back and get a first next year? But all right, how much can I get just to trade back the one spot? And a lot of times the guy behind you will say, it's okay, I got two guys I want anyway. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter. And just and then sometimes you're just like, all right, you know what, man, I can get us. This is worth way more than this, but just give me a three next year. Give me a three, especially if you don't have any more picks in this draft. If the dude, you know, give me three six just to move back one pick. You come up and take your pick because you want to trade back anyway. If you got stuck and you had to make a pick, but you're still looking at Xavier Worthy or A.D. Mitchell, so if you don't have a very strong or, you know, or the guy from Oregon, what's the name? Troy Frank, Frank. Frank. So you're looking at Troy. So you don't really have an idea. You don't really have, if you haven't zeroed in and you can't live without one of those guys. So that's why you're doing a trade back to begin with. So you go back one pick and now you can trade back again. Now you restart your draft clock mm-hmm. and you've, yeah, you've gave it up, you know, cheaper than you wanted to. And I'm, you maybe you don't have to wait till you got five minutes left on the draft clock to try to make that pick. Uh, you know, try to make that trade. Maybe you even get something started with that guy and say, hey, what do you want to give me to come up and get your guy here? It's cool. I like everybody. All right, well, you know, uh, I see I see you got 2-7. Uh, if you give me 2-7, I'll give you my third next year and we'll switch places. Yeah. No thanks. All right, well, I see you got 3-7. Uh, if you give me 3-7 and, and your third next year, you give me those two threes, I'll switch places. No thanks. All right, well, you know, an hour or two goes by, you've been doing some other stuff. All right, well, I, you know, I'll take a 3-7. And we switch places, you know, maybe he says, you know, just keep making it cheaper if you have to. And, it, it, you know, and then you maybe, if, you know, it, it works out and you can restart that clock and keep trading. Right. Um, so I, li- I like the idea of, you know, uh, trading for the the second trade back is where, you you know, you pick up another potential starter. But uh, and, and, and I know you won't take any time to pull out of Jacoby Myers, you know, and I think. He Jacoby Myers this year, I think, could do a lot better than he did last year. Um, if they get, and they he was sw- good last year. Well, he was good, but I think he could be better this year with um, the old boy from the Colts, Gardner Minshew. Minshew's coming over, and I just think Minshew could be potentially peppering him with targets with the defense running around uh, chasing um, Devontae Adams. So anyway, I mean, that's that's. Wide receiver 24, baby. Last year. 
24? Kobe Bryant. That yeah. good? Yeah. Every you, you, every time we come on here, you slander him a well, little bit. I'm like, dude, this guy crushed last year. Wide receiver 24. Dude, that's because he played all the games. If you do points per game, he goes down. He's not. He didn't play down. all the games. He uh, missed yeah, the game. No, one game. Okay. Well, now one we're, game. he's Load, scored 13.7 points per game. Load management. Let's go. That's just what we wanted Godwin to score. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, you could get to Kobe. Get him. Pick him up. If you didn't have Godwin, I'd say get Godwin on the trade <laughs> yeah. back. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's get to this next one because we went too long on that one. Okay. 